Hey, hello everyone. This is Rajendra. Welcome back to the channel. Today we are uh, back with another interesting video. So uh, in this Kubernetes series, we are going to talk about a demon set object. What is the use of that demon set object? When to use it and how it works? That's something we are going to cover in this video. So without wasting time, let me just quickly share my screen to quickly show you, uh, explain the concept. Perfect. So let's talk about it on the whiteboard first. So uh, let me just give a, a quick uh, background. So we talked about a deployment object, right? We have an earlier video in this series where we talked about the deployment object. So what the deployment object is doing, whatever cluster you have, let's say in this cluster you have four nodes. So when to use deployment? If you have any microservice, okay, if you have any microservice that you want to basically uh, deploy it in the Kubernetes cluster with specific number of replicas, let's say 10 replicas. Okay, so what it will do, the deployment object will make sure that uh, your 10 replicas are running. So maybe it will distribute something like this, two, three, two, two, right? And then somewhere three, right? like this. The, it will make sure that 10 replicas are running. Where those are running, it really doesn't matter, right? So that's okay for your uh, uh, applications like front end where you want to basically have multiple replicas and you want to keep that running all the time, right? So in that case, deployment object is the right choice. But now let's say uh, you have a kind of a logging application, okay? You have a logging application. So you want to, let's say, take a logs of your node. So in that case, you want to, have your pod running on each node to collect the log of that node, right? So in that case, deployment is not uh, giving you the guarantee that your pods are going to get created on each node, right? Deployment will give you that, let's say, if you have four nodes and you say four replicas, so it will create four replicas, but there is no guarantee that it will get created on each of the node, right? So. What demon set is doing is it demon set will give you ga that guarantee that your pod will be created on each node. But again, to make sure that it gets created on each node, we also need to provide some uh, basically uh, kind of a taint and toleration uh, functionality along with that, right? Because even though demon set is ready to go and create the pod on each node, but what if the on the node side, there is a tent, right? If the, there is a tent on the node side, your pod will not get created on that node. So that is where it's a, our responsibility to make sure we are providing that toleration in your demonset.yaml so that whatever pod is going to get created, that will get created on a node where there is a tent available. Okay, if there is a no tent, for sure demon set will create the pod there, right? So let me just quickly recap, demon set, we should use it if you have application that you want to create on each node. For example, if you have a logging application where you want to collect the logs of each node, okay? Or if you have an application, uh, for example, uh, monitoring application, you want to monitor the nodes right so if you have that requirement you should go ahead and use the demand set object right perfect so i hope uh, everyone understood the concept now let's go ahead and create uh practical okay so i have a kubernetes cluster ready now before i uh, talk about anything i just wanted to show uh, talk about one more thing here that uh, we already discussed about the kubernetes cluster and what we have observed is uh, there is a one cube system namespace available. Okay. So under this cube system namespace, what happens is under that cube system namespace, you are, uh, uh, what we have observed is cube proxy. Okay. Cube proxy and CNI plugin pods are there on each of the node. So how that is feasible? Basically, internally, what they have done is they have created one demon set for cube proxy and one demon set for CNI plugin 
and that's the reason on all of the node one of the one of the pod of q proxy and cni run right so let me just quickly show you that before we actually create our demonset so how to get it kubectl get pod hyphen n cube system so under cube system namespace you'll see that there are three cube proxy pods are running and three kinet pods are running right let me use hyphen o wide to get the more details so here you can see the kinet pod they are running on all the three nodes similarly cube proxy they are also running on all the three nodes so how it is running if you go back and just run the kubectl demon set hyphen n cube system what you will observe here is there are two demon set created and under this demon set these three three pods are created on each node right so that's something you can achieve it so i have one simple demon set dot yaml uh, if you closely look at this yaml it is very much similar to your deployment yaml okay but again if you as a standard if you see every kubernetes object has this top four object same api version kind metadata and spec okay and then this section is uh, basically to know how demon set controller will get to know that what all pod it has to manage so on the basis of this selector criteria it will be able to identify and then this template is simply your pod template okay now <coughs> sorry one uh, extra thing you will find it here is the toleration now why this toleration is available here so we have three nodes out of that uh, in the in the previous video about 1010 toleration we talked about uh, how to add the taint and what is the use of that taint, right? So on the master node, there is a by default taint available, right? So if I just go ahead and create a demon set, it will create the pods on the worker node, but it will not be able to create it on the master node because on the master node, there is a taint available, right? So to make sure our pod gets created on the master node as well, we have to provide the toleration of the master node. Okay, and that case can be for your any worker node as well. Let's say on your one of the worker node, there is a tent already available, right? And if you want to create your pod on that node, you have to make sure that you are adding the toleration of that worker node as well. Okay, so that's something we have to remember and that's what we have added here, okay? So here master node has a tent and that's the reason we have added this toleration associated. If you don't add the toleration, your pod will not get created on that node. Okay, that's something we have to remember. Even though the mon set is capable of doing it, but due to that taint, it is not able to add it. And if you want to make it happen, just simply go ahead and add the toleration associated. Okay, perfect. So this is the YAML I have. So let me just save it uh, before I do this. So here you can see it is trying to create uh, in the cube system namespace. Maybe let me just remove this and let it be in the default namespace. So let me save it and let's create it. kubectl apply hyphen f demon set dot yaml. So it got created. If I go back and just run that kubectl get demon set, so you can see demon set got created. Desired count, current count is three. And if I go back and check the pod, so we have three pod got created. Now where those are running? Let me use hyphen o wide. We'll be able to know that okay they are running on all the so that's how simply if you have any kind of application that you want to be running on all the nodes use the demon set okay but what extra care we need to do is make sure that if there is any node have a taint then make sure that we are providing the associated toleration into your demon set .yam. okay so i hope everyone understood so that's it for this video uh if you have any query uh, any question, please write it in the comments. If you like the video, please subscribe the channel, share it with uh, your, uh, your circle. Okay, so that's it for the, this video. Uh, thanks, everyone.